If you're using a behavior-driven development tool like Cucumber and you already have some scenarios written in plain English, um, then they might look something like this. You'd have a feature file that contains some scenarios. And in this case, uh, we have a login example that is testing a valid and invalid user. And we have some glue code already set up in the step definitions that specify a valid user credentials and an invalid user credentials. And then we have some Selenium commands to load the page and fill in the form and submit it. And then we're handling some assertions in here by finding different bits on the page to see if they're displayed or not displayed depending on the state of the page. Within Cucumber, there is a support directory and a file called envrb within Ruby. And what this does is it runs before all of the test code. So this is where we handle setting up and tearing down our tests. And you might have something similar like this, where you are creating an instance of Selenium, storing it in a driver object, which is an instance variable that's made available in the step definitions. And then after each test, you would quit. Now to go ahead and add in something like Apple Tools Eyes for visual testing, we'd first need to pull in uh, the Apple Tools Eyes uh, gem. And to do that, we'll need to add it to our gem file. And then perform a bundle install. After that, we come back to our envrb file. We want to require the gem. And then we need to create an instance of Apple Tools Eyes. So we create an eyes object to store and reference the Apple Tools Eyes instance. And then we call Apple Tools Eyes.new. And then we need to specify our API key. And this could be a hard-coded string value if you're comfortable putting that kind of information into your test setup and committing it to your code repository. Um, I also encourage the use of an environment variable to handle the same thing, which I'm gonna use here. And then um, rather than just calling Selenium directly and storing it in the instance variable, we're actually going to store it as a local browser variable then feed it to Apple Tools Eyes, and then Apple Tools Eyes will return us a modified WebDriver object, which enables Apple Tools Eyes to capture screenshots and perform its baseline image comparison. So we're gonna set eyes.open and store that in the driver instance variable. And to, for eyes.open, we have to specify a few things. We need to provide the app name, and the application we're testing is called the internet. And we'll need to specify the test name and since there are multiple tests we'll be running, we can specify this information dynamically. And so we can take this scenario enumerable variable and use it to grab uh, metadata out of each test as it's running. And so we're gonna call scenario.name and that'll grab the display name of the test. And then finally, we want to pass in the instance of Selenium to Apple Tools Eyes. And then after each test runs, we're going to want uh, to close the Apple Tools Eyes session. And then if we hop back to our step definitions, uh, we also need to tell Apple Tools Eyes when to check the browser. And so in our then steps, the assertion steps, we're going to call eyes.check window. And with check window, we can specify a, uh, a string to denote what it is we're checking. And so for this uh, step definition, we're checking to make sure that the user was able to access the secure portion of the site. So we'll call this logged in. And then for this condition, this was when they were unable to gain access. So we'll just call this one not logged in. So then if we go ahead and run our test using bundle exec cucumber, the test completed, and we can also see them by hopping into our test results dashboard in Apple Tools Eyes.